All right, today we're going to talk about waveguides. What are waveguides and why do we use them? What does it matter? Uh, one thing I get asked fairly regularly is, uh, well, what is a waveguide and why do we use them? That's really what we're going to talk about today. Now, whenever you have a point source in space and you're emitting electromagnetic radiation, and this being the distinctive here is we're talking about waveguides in the context of electromagnetic pr propagation of waves. So if you have a point source and you, you have uh, an emission from that and it propagates out into space, you're going to have a, a spherical wave. It's going to be moving out spherically for, a, for, for consistent space. Now, as that propagates through space, you're going to have losses as the energy, energy gets more and more spread out. And there are absorption of uh, different frequencies with uh, certain things. We're not going to worry about that right now, but just for the, the general consideration of space, the intensity of the energy that's being put out falls off as one over the square of the distance as it moves away from that point source. As, as we're looking at a representation here, looking at some unitless uh, value for uh, distance, then twice that distance and three times that distance, and it, and it rolls off as one over the square of the distance. That's what we call the inverse square. That's a loss of an inverse square, one over the square of the distance. Now, that's undesirable, especially when we want to capture energy and we want to send it in a very specific direction. Right here, we're talking about dealing with energy propagating in three space, propagating in three dimensions. But take the example where we have an antenna and we have high energy uh, a large amount of uh, electromagnetic radiation that we want to send down that line. Well, how do we do that? Well, the answer is we use a waveguide. A waveguide is essentially a way of constraining electromagnetic energy and taking that and causing it to propagate, but only in one dimension. Okay. Uh, for example, this is a, a waveguide feed network uh, that uh, feed, feeds multiple ports of an antenna system. It's got a little rectangular port here and it goes out to all these other rectangular ports. And what it's doing is it's causing the radiation, keeping it inside of here and causing it only to propagate along the single dimensional line of action that it cares about. Now, when it comes to waveguides, electromagnetic radiation uh, propagating waveguides, uh, there can be a couple of uh, major types that get talked about, uh, circular and rectangular. Now, uh, for the most part, we're going to be encountering and dealing with rectangular waveguides. Um, now, that is something where it's going to, rather than have the energy propagating and spreading out in three space, it's going to take that energy and really cause it to bounce off the walls and move down line. And ideally, and again, we don't live in an ideal world, we are dealing with radiation that has, that's essentially lossless once it is in that waveguide. So we can be talking about a couple of different things uh, as far as how that's propagating. Generally, when we're talking about a, a wave moving through space, we can have an electric field, we can have a magnetic field, and those being orthogonal to each other. Now, the same in a waveguide. We can have, down the direction of propagation, we can have the, mag the electric field, represented here in purple, being transverse transverse electric field, transverse to the direction of propagation, or we can have transverse magnetic. It's transverse to the direction of propagation is the magnetic field. Now some considerations, and these are things you'll run into when you're, you're talking about waveguides, is reflections, a mismatch in impedance. Say you're, you're coming from some source, and then you go through, and we'll say it's a transmission line with some impedance and then it goes into a waveguide of another impedance. Well, if these don't match, you're going to have reflections. It's going to, energy that's going to go down the line, it's going to be kicked back because it doesn't match. There's a mismatch in impedances. Now, in, with what we use here, we have this uppercase gamma is representing what we call our, uh, what we're looking at for reflection. So we have a ratio of impedances is effectively what we're looking at as far as uh, the uh, mismatch in impedances. So if this were a value of zero at the output of this, we would have a perfectly matched transmission line network. If it's one, 
all of the energy that goes down the line gets reflected and sent back down the line. This can cause a great deal of damage if you're talking about, you know, tens of kilowatts of energy or even less depending on how sensitive the system is where the energy goes down the line it gets sent right back and damages something where it should never should have been coming back to now what where this gets used in and where we we hear about more practically is the uh vswr we're talking about a standing wave ratio which is really a a ratio of the max to the min of the the standing wave potential going down the line and that's really where we use this you'll, you'll see this a lot whenever you're looking at um, uh, uh, the losses you're gonna experience in couplers, you'll see this quite often. Uh, really, anytime you, you have a situation where you have an element in an RF circuit where you can have any mismatch in impedance, you're going to be looking at a, 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 a reflection of VSWR, which will actually tell you your losses in your system and know how much energy is being lost as a result of that. Now, some other things that we didn't really touch on here are concepts such as uh, skin depth, skin depth being really where the, uh, the currents are moving through the conductive material. Waveguides themselves must be conductive in order to a Latin, in order to have that energy travel down line. Now, uh, something to remember is whenever you're using waveguides, you're going to experience losses differently than you will in uh, coaxial systems. Um, waveguides very often gets u get used for much higher frequency systems. And also, uh, another thing uh, to remember is this, the lower the frequency, the larger your waveguide's going to be. So if you end up on the order of 80 gigahertz, you're going to be talking about single digit millimeters uh, for the waveguide cross-section. If you're somewhere around X-band, you're going to be more around that you know, inch by three-eighths of an inch size, size rectangular. Just to give you an idea, X-band is a, uh, an 8 to 12 gigahertz nominal frequency. Anyhow, uh, if you have an opportunity, please uh, check out around the site and uh, see uh, some of these whiteboard videos here by, from Duotech Services. Uh, check out our, our, more of our uh, information on duotechservices.com. Uh, in the future, we'll hit some more concepts such as uh, bandwidth, analog filters, and antenna design.